So it says that the throne of God and the Lamb are there, and his servants will serve him. Mm -hmm. Serve him as God and the Lamb. Nope. That's an obvious misreading. So I, I just quoted it. How did I yeah, misread I have two, it? I have two uh, minutes here. So uh, the throne of God and the Lamb will be in it. Okay. There's God. Oh, and by the way, there's also the Lamb. Okay. God is not the Lamb. The Lamb is not God. There are two selves, two beings there. And, the, ver and the, the, the passage continues. And his servants will worship him. They will see his face. And his name will be on their foreheads. Right? And the very next verse, and then you're like, aha, it says his. They got to be the same he, which is a way of saying they're the same self. That's why I said, if you are a Trinitarian, you're a one self Trinitarian. The very next verse says, and there will be no more night. They need no light or lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. Okay, so it's really God who's the primary and the ultimate object of religious worship in the Bible. And it's not Tuggy's theory that worshiping Jesus is to the glory of God. It's what Paul says explicitly, because he's exalted, uh, the worship that's given to him is to the glory of God the Father. Got to share this today. I was listening to this debate today on my way to work, at work, and I said I got to share this today. So the passage that they are uh, debating in that moment is Revelation chapter 22, okay? They were going over this point, talking about the thrones. There's one throne. There's personal, uh, uh, singular personal pronoun, but that's not what I want to focus on. I want to focus on something that Dr. Tuggy uh, just... <laughs> Like I said, man, I don't know. I don't know this guy. He's obviously a Unitarian. Don't know if this was intentional or accidental. Uh, but he mentioned here, and I could tell he's reading from like an ESV type version. But it says here that the Lord God will be their light. And I just want to, again, just replay that to see what he said about it. And then I'm going to show you what I remember about this passage. They need no light or lamp or sun. That's why I said, if you are a Trinitarian, you're a one self Trinitarian. The very next verse says, and there will be no more night. They need no light or lamp or sun for the Lord God will be their light and they will reign forever and ever. For the Lord God will be their light and they will reign forever and ever. And then he says, okay, so it's really God who's the primary and the ultimate object of religious worship in the Bible. About that. So, okay, so it's really God who's the primary and ultimate object of religious worship in the Bible, and it's not Dr. Tug's, all right, Dr. Tuggy's theory that worshiping Yahusha to the glory of God is what Paul says explicitly. <laughs> he clearly is saying here that because it's the Lord God who will be the light, he's agreeing that the Lord God will be the light, and that is the ultimate God who is primary and the ultimate object of religious worship. I want to show you something right now. I want to show you something right now about this. Come with me. Walk with me. Walk with me. Journey with me. Let's go back to where, and I'm going to keep these two parallel scriptures up. I usually use the New King James, all right? But uh, I, don't, I don't really, doesn't really matter much to me. Um, Let's go. I sent this to my fellowship today, and uh, Sister Ezzy gave me some feedback to add to it, but this is where I want to go, just to give the history of this passage. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 60, verse 19, to see where this statement comes from. And night will be no more, okay? And night will be no more. Okay, they will need no light of lamp or sun for the Lord God. And I would, and I believe Tuggy, like you heard, would agree that this is Yahuwah God, Yahuwah Elohim, will be their light. The Lord God will be their light and they will reign forever and ever. Where is this coming from? All right, this is a quote from the Old Testament. All right. And let's see if they actually, and they, the cross reference here doesn't even lead us there, but I'm going to take us there. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 19. 
The sun shall be no more your light by day, nor for brightness shall the moon give you light. But the Lord, which is Yahuwah, Yahweh, Yahovah, Yahuwah will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. Your sun shall no more go down, nor your moon withdraw itself, for Yahuwah will be your everlasting light. It's very clear. The Old Testament sets the stage that Yahuwah is the light. Okay? Now let's go to, so, so far, this is confirming Revelation chapter 22, verse 5. Now let's go to Revelation, um, Revelation chapter 21. Check this out. This is where Dr. Tuggy, I don't know if he forgot about this or completely decided to intentionally ignore this and not mention it, uh, not even consider this passage in regards to this black and white statement the lord god is the light yahuwah is the light but revelation chapter 21 starting at verse 22 says this and i saw no temple in the city for its temple is the lord god almighty but what's this and the lamb Nobody else is known as the lamb in scripture other than Yahusha. He is the lamb of God. And all throughout the book of Revelation, in proper context, that's without question. So let's read that again. And I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is. Its temple, not its temples, plural. There's no plural temples here. It says its temple is Yahuwah God Almighty and the Lamb. I'm sorry, you can't get around that. There is no gymnastics. There is no space available for you to duck and dodge this and to do a uh, horrible biblical interpretation. You can't run from this. And it continues in verse 23 to confirm and says, and the city has no need of the sun, sounds exactly like Isaiah chapter 60, verse 19. And the city has no need of the sun or moon to shine on it is a direct cross-reference to Isaiah 60, verse 19 and 20. Direct, quote, for the glory of God gives its light and its lamp is the lamb. You have a light and you have a lamp. What is the distinction and the similarity between light and a lamp? What is the similarity and the distinction between a light and a lamp? Especially in this context. The similarity is that they are one object. It's one object. You have a lamp and you have its light. Let me give you an example. What do you see before your eyes right now, audience? What do you see before your eyes? Hopefully, you will admit that you see a lamp. This is a lamp. And what is the lamp projecting from within itself? Light. Light. There is no ducking and dodging this. This is so clear that I believe those who are willing to seek will find this answer. And I believe Yahuwah made it so mysterious, yet so revealing that he's only willing to give the full understanding to those who are seeking his truth. 
that as a child, you would be able to embrace the simplicity of the scriptures. Let's read this again with this picture in mind. Revelation chapter 21, verse 22. I saw no temple in it. For Yahuwah God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city has no need for the sun, neither of the moon to shine, for the very glory of God illuminated it. And its lamp is the Lamb. This video is going to be called The Lamb is the Lamp. Yahuwah is the light. It's very interesting because Yahusha says that he is the light. Sister Ezzy text today in the group text, in addition to these verses that I shared, she said, I would say Luke chapter 2, verse 25 to 33 prophesies that Yahusha will be a light for the unveiling of the nations in verse 32. Let's look at that. Verse 25 to 33. It says, and behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah, Yahuwah's Messiah. So he came by the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child, Yahusha, to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Yahuwah, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all peoples, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen, Ezzy. Amen, Ezzy. And what does it say? Revelation 22, 5 again. It says, And night will be no more. They will need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God, Yahuwah God, will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. Hallelujah. And again, Revelation 21 says, and I saw no temple in it, for its temple is Yahuwah God Almighty and the Lamb, and the city has no need for sun, moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives its light, and its lamp is the Lamb. And again, Sister Ezzy brought us here. a light to bring revelation to Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. Hallelujah. What else do we have here? What else? What else? What else? We have here also 1 John chapter 1, verse 5. 1 John 1, 5. It says, This is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Hallelujah to that. Yahuwah is light. And in the beginning, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 to 4, Yahuwah created light first to separate light from the darkness on the earth. So I believe that the first scriptures, Isaiah and Revelation, are prophecies of when heaven will descend on the earth. Okay, I'm going to just little exhortation it's prophecy of the new heaven and new earth okay will descend on the earth having no need for sun and moon because of yahuwah's countenance makes perfect sense to me amen as he yahuwah who is light yahuwah who is light came into his creation which was in darkness i'm gonna say that again that's what I text back to her, to the group. I said, amen, Ezzy. Yahuwah, 
Yahweh, Yahovah, who is light, came into his creation, which was in darkness. Let's read that Genesis passage. With everything, everything that I'm showing to you, you got to put it all together. Don't cherry pick scriptures. Put it all together. Genesis chapter one. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. Yahuwah is light. God is light. He was light before he created anything. He's always been light. But in his creation, which he was creating, which was in darkness, he said, let there be light. This was Yahuwah entering into his creation. And we can go wherever we want with that. I don't care. It doesn't matter much to me, the details of this, whether you want to believe that that was actually Yahusha as the son of God. So now God himself, Yahuwah, who is light, who is life, actually takes on or takes on an external uh, a body, if you will, that he will forever interact with his creation called the son of God, Yahusha, who is the light of the world. Yahusha is the light of the world. And as we've been reading, according to Revelation chapter 21, 19 and 20, God Almighty, Yahuwah Almighty, Elohim, and the Lamb are the light. So it makes no difference to me of what details you want to put in between, but it would make sense to me that we have their confirmation of both the Father and the Son being the same person existing simultaneously at the same time. And that's why it would make sense that down in verse 26, it can say, then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. He was not speaking to angels because angels had no involvement in creating mankind. That's conjecture. The only people you hear about creating anything and everything actually, creating everything, is Yahuwah himself, his spirit, obviously, and the lamb, the word of God, the son of God, Yahusha. No question about it. What else do we have here in our lovely group text? Amen. And therefore, John chapter 8, verse 12, and John chapter 9, verse ta- uh, verse five would make sense. I would not read these passages without the Revelation 21 and everything else that I did, because when you do, people will say, oh, yeah, Yahusha is light, but so are we. Anyway, let's go there real quick. John chapter eight, verse 12. It says, then Yahusha spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. And John 9, 5 says, As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. I would not read these passages to Unitarians, Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, Arianists, or any any of these uh, uh, versions of people who are within the Messianic Hebrew Roots movement or Christianity or whatever you want to, Wherever these wolves are, people who believe this mess that Yahusha is not God, he's not Yahuwah, he's not Yahweh, he's just a created being who, who, who God is allowing to rent, he's renting out God's glory and worship, and then he's going to return it back to the Father. Do not believe this idolatrous, heretical, damnable heresy, false teaching from these people. It's false. It doesn't line up. And if you are a seeker, you will find the truth. If you are, if you are rebellious and willfully disobedient and stubborn and stiff-necked, you will ignore these passages. At least consider it and show that you have some type of love for God. But I would not read John chapter 8, verse 12, or John chapter 9, verse 5 to prove this point, because all people are going to do, and this is what I said in the text, 
without the other passages, John chapter 8, verse 12 and 9, 5 is not as convincing because once again, scripture shows that man is also the light of the world, according to Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. And this is where Unitarians will go. Matthew 5, 14. You are the light. Yahushua is speaking to his disciples. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. So that's where Unitarians will go. Oh, it doesn't matter. Yahushua is a light. So are we a light. So it's just a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy. No, you have to embrace Revelation chapter 21. You have to embrace Revelation chapter 21, verse 22 and 23. All right. And that's pretty much the lesson I wanted to show today. So once again, what are you looking at? And let's read that passage one more time. Revelation. Matter of fact, let's do it in order. Ready? Isaiah chapter 60, verse 19. The sun will no longer be your light by day, nor will the moon shine for illumination at night. But Yahuwah will be your everlasting light and your God will be your glory. Revelation chapter 21, verse 22 and 23. I saw no temple in it, for Yahuwah God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city has no need for the sun, neither of the moon to shine, for the very glory of God illuminated it. And its lamp is the Lamb. Revelation chapter 22, verse 5. There will no longer be any night, and they have no need for the light of a lamp or the light of the sun, because the Lord God will shine on them, and they will reign forever. Yahuwah is the light. Yahusha is the light. And I pray that you will worship him as the one and only true God who is worthy. He is our King and our Savior. He is humble. He is meek. He is glorious. And I pray that you will worship him as such. And repent, any of you who have embraced this Arianist, Unitarian, Jehovah's Witness, Mormon rendition of the study of God, any of you who have embraced this or entertained this, I pray that you will fall to your knees and pray and repent of this and return to the Savior in Yahusha's name. Shalom.